Welcome back to another tutorial. I'll be showing you how to make this animation spiral loop. We're going to start off by deleting the camera. Select the cube, press tab, press control B to bevel. Click on the bevel options and increase segments to five. Then go to modifier and add a subdivision surface. Increase that to three. Press the tab key to go back to object mode and we're going to apply the subdivision surface. Select the cube, right click, shade smooth. Go to shading. Decrease the subsurface to 1.121. Decrease the roughness to 0 0.016. Increase the transmission to 1 and increase the transmission roughness to 0 0.164. I'm gonna to go to the base color and I'm gonna change it to green. Adjust the values. Hold Shift A and we're gonna add in a mix shader. Shift A again, and we're going to add a glossy BSDF. And we're going to link them together. We're going to change the color to blue, decrease the value, and reduce the factor on the mix shader. Click on the rendered view. I want to make the cube look like glass. I'm going to go to Render Properties and change EV to Cycles. Then I'm going to go to Mold, Shift A and add in a Noise Texture. Link the color to the background. Shift A and add in a Color Ramp. And increase the black values. I'm going to leave it at 0.393 go back to layout mode go to modifier properties and add an array uncheck the relative offset check the object offset shift a go to empty and add a plane axis select empty hold control to snap to grid Then we're going to select the cube, select the eyedropper, and click on Object Empty. Change the count to 94. Click on Empty, Object Properties, change the rotation, and just play around to see what you like. Also play around with the Y and Z values. I'm trying to create a swirl effect, so I'm just playing with the values. I'm just playing with the values to get what I want. So we need to make the cube a solid object. Select the cube. So if we go to array and click on a little drop down arrow, click apply. This will make the cube a solid object. Go to object, set origin, geometry to origin. To center the pivot of the object, hold control and rotate the cube to snap to grid. I'm going to rotate the cube in line with the X axis. Make sure the cube is in the center of the grid and make sure it's straight. You can also hold shift to rotate in small scales. Press the tilde key and go to right. Go to object properties and rotate it in place by adjusting the rotation values. Center it in line as much as possible.
hold shift A and add a camera into the scene. The camera will appear in the middle of the grid. Now we need to move the camera along the X axis by eight. I need to make the cube smaller. So select the cube, hold control and press S. It will scale down following the grid size. So I'm going to scale it down even more so that the end of the cube meets the camera. Select the camera and go to Objects Properties and change the rotation X to 90. Change Y to 0 and change Z to 90. Press the tilde key and go to View Camera. Go to the camera options and change focal length to 86. We need to add more duplicates to make it into a continuous loop. Come out of the camera view, select the cubes, press M and select new collection and click OK. Shift A, collection instance and select collection 2. Click on the cubes, hold control and drag the duplicate behind. Make sure the duplicate meets the end of the first set of cubes. Select the cube, control D to duplicate and move it behind. Duplicate it one more time, move it behind. Press tilde key and go to view camera. And now you can't tell where the loop ends. Click on render mode to see what the final outcome looks like. Go back to viewport shading. Come out of the camera view. Select the camera. Now I'm going to animate the camera. Drag up the timeline. Change the frames to 120. Make sure the camera is selected and add a keyframe on frame one. Skip the last frame and go to 121. The reason for this is to prevent a one frame pause. Type negative eight and add a keyframe. Go to view camera. The first and last keyframes need to be the same. When I go to keyframe one, you can see that the frames look different from one another. So I need to make an amendment. Go to the second row of duplicates, hold control and move it forward by one grid. And repeat the process for the duplicates behind. Go back to the camera view, select the first and last frame, they should be the same. Press play on the timeline. The animation is done, but as you can see, it starts to slow down towards the end. We don't want that. I'm going to pause the animation and I'm going to create a new window. Go to the corner and drag it up. Click on editor type, graph editor. Double tap A on the keyboard to select all of the frames. Go to key, interpolation mode and select linear. This will make the animation have a smoother transition so that when you play the animation, it's in a continuous loop. I'm going to pause the animation. Go to render mode to see what the final outcome looks like. I'm going to go back to viewport shading. Then I'm going to select the camera and change the focal length. I'm going to leave it at 138. You can also add in a HDR image to get different lighting outcomes. 
go to world properties click on color environment texture open and i'm going to add in a hdr image so you can just add in different hdr images to see what you like You can also make the background transparent, go to render properties, go to film and click on transparent. Go to output properties when you're ready to export the animation. Click the folder where you want to save it. Change the file format to whatever you like. This is the final outcome. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.